Hey everybody, Scott Carson here. Hope you are doing well this hump day Wednesday of the week. It is actually March 29th uh, out there. The uh, month has been flying by, obviously, and April was rolling along. Um, hopefully you guys are out rocking and rolling, doing some amazing things. I have to give a big shout out this morning. We're starting to see a lot of... Uh, Actually, not a lot, but some great videos from people, some videos from a variety of people that are out making things happen. George Crocker posted a good video yesterday, had an email come out today. He's posted Bigger Pockets, LinkedIn. He's really doing a great job. I have to give a big shout out also to, also to Kathy Postulate and Karen Bossman with Notable Assets. So uh, if you go to their Facebook page, Notable Assets, and take a look, they filmed a great little video yesterday. Yes, they said it took them five hours to film it and five hours to edit it. It's always going to suck the first time you do something. Embrace the suck, all right? Because <laughs> the next time they do it, it may not take 10 hours. It should take three or two. But it's a really good quality video. Now, one big thing, everybody, um, let's give the, the walls credit they did a video to. Uh, Pari is sending out emails and stuff like that. There's a few other things. I think Jennifer Murtry is working on a video. I haven't seen it yet. Don't say you're hating what you're doing in the first 10 seconds of a video, Karen. All right? Uh, because the rest of the video was amazing that they focus, focused on with Noble Assets. But anyway, what's great is seeing people take action. It's uh, uh, always a good thing. I guarantee it's starting to make people notice what you're doing if you're actually doing something. It's starting to, especially if you post it and continue to do this on a regular basis, week in, week out, you will start driving more traffic to you than you've ever expected before. So, a couple side notes. Uh, last night, I went to the Trillion Dollar Investment Mixer put on by Quest IRA, which they do one every uh, second Tuesday, or the fourth Tuesday? Yeah, fourth Tuesday of the month here in Austin. Uh, it was great hanging out with about 50 uh, real estate investors. They had uh, Carlton from New Western Acquisitions drive in and actually spend an hour talking about all the new proposed tax cuts that Trump is trying to do. And so one of the things I think everybody needs to do is take a minute, actually a few minutes, and download the PDF to take a look at it because it's be the biggest uh, amount of tax cuts that they've proposed since the, the income tax was rolled out. And there's some really good things. There's a lot of things that are still up in the air. Um, there's some interesting things you're talking about how um, they're going to give immediate write-offs, they're going to delay some, uh, move some things over, they're adjusting the tax cuts to basically three flat tax rates from a uh, currently of uh, seven, where it's from 10% to 39%. They're basically doing from zero or 12 up to 33% on the other way. So that's interesting, seeing some of the growth. They're really trying to, the thing to th keep in mind is that the, the tax code has grown, obviously, over the last few years from... In 1986, it was 26,000 pages to where it was at last year of being at 70,000 pages. There's an image there for you to take a look at. Um, so yes, you do need an expert to basically help you out with that stuff. But there are some great things about buying properties that they're going to allow you to take immediate write-off of dollar for dollar of what you purchase, um, especially with business growth. If you buy a tractor as a farmer, you could basically you know, depreciate that and write that off at a portion over five to seven years. Well, now, so just writing off the bumper or the tires this year, you can write off the whole acquisition price. So there's some other great things out there to take a look at. I am not a tax expert or CPA, but uh, I think Nicole's posting the link. Yeah, once we get back in the office. Oh, yeah, once we get back in the office, we'll post the link below that you'll want to take a minute to download and read through it. Now, it's not finalizing some things, but what's interesting to see is there's not been a lot of talk about this in the news media. It's been more about the Russians. <laughs> okay. And uh, there's some interesting things to say about this. I had a great conversation with Rick Gossett, who's a hard money lender here in Austin. We visited for a little bit about some of the things that are going on in the communities, in the markets. And it's good to have cash right now uh, instead of being in the stock market. It's also good to be looking at buying as many assets as you possibly can right now. So keep that in mind, everybody. It's a great time to buy. Based on what they're trying to propose, with Trump obviously being a real estate entrepreneur, that um, a lot of tax benefits are coming to real estate investors making things happen. But that's just a side note. I always like to share that. I'll probably talk a little bit about it 
at the uh, Note Mastermind next weekend, which we're pretty excited. We're at T minus less than just over one week away. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Um, finalizing head count tomorrow with everybody. So uh, a couple things. We almost have the schedule finalized for Note Camp 3.0. Awesome. Really excited of that. I'm finalizing like the last eight slots today with everybody. So we'll have a lineup. Well, we already have a lineup of most of the speakers. But a lineup of time slot and discussion of topics rolling out uh, over the next couple days. Actually, we're going to look for that probably mm, week after next. Because next week will be posted, focus almost solely on... No, no mastermind group. But uh, if you are in the uh, Pacific Northwest, Seattle area, I'll be out Monday in Seattle speaking at the Quest IRA All Pro Mixer. Uh, we got some cool stuff there. Jason Bible, a lot of Houston host buyers. James here. Uh, Jeff Watson will be there as well. Um, Nathan Long and myself uh, uh, make up a panel of five experts that will be talking about all sorts of different things, real estate uh, let you guys ask questions remotely and also if you're live there in Seattle. So looking forward to that Monday night. We've got a link that I'll be posting as well below here if you'd like to get signed up for the Quest All Pro event. But anyway, the title for today's thing is Freshman Year Investors. And this is one thing that I see constantly, no matter where I go networking, whether it's going to the All Pro Mixer or going to the trillion dollar mixer, going out to Houston to a networking event, whether it's the Redneck Country Club or going to a local RIA meeting in Baltimore or wherever I go, I run into real estate investors who act like freshmen in college. And I don't mean that's a bad thing, but it's not necessarily the best thing. Eager beavers. Eh, yes. They're, they, they're excited to be doing something, which is great. You've got to have passion. You gotta have energy about what you do. But I, I talk to people that are all over the place. They're like taking women's studies and calculus and liberal arts stuff and history and science. They're all over the place. Like freshmen, they're taking all these basics and I get that. But when I ask people, hey, what do you focus on investing? I don't get a straight answer. I get I had one guy, oh, I have rentals, and I do fix and flips, and I do hard money and private money, and I lend out my IRA. And I'm like, oh. when I hear that, I'm just like, I start walking the other way. Not that I'm not there just to try and find note investors, because there's some great people that do notes uh, in Austin. I love having a conversation. It's just that people aren't focused. And that's one of the most difficult things I see holding people back, is they aren't focused on, they try to do everything and they don't have any success. They end up taking all these extra credits that end up in hours that they don't have success if they just stood by something a little bit, okay? If they just focused on one avenue, one major in real estate, they'd have a lot more success instead of trying to do a variety of different things. And yes, I guess you wanna dip your toe in the water and figure things out and you don't wanna make sure you're not in something that doesn't make sense. <clears throat> this is why you want to go out and talk to your guidance counselors, your people that are doing things, people that are doing deals in your markets. You have to pick their brains and see, hey, if you could do something, what would you do today? If you were starting over, what would you do today? And what's the biggest mistakes that you've made along the way? All right? Those are the biggest questions. If you knew what you know now back when you started five years, ten years ago, or whenever, what would you be doing today? All right, And I just see so much energy being wasted by people by doing things that used to work three years ago or doing a couple deals here and there. Hey, doing deals is the most important thing. I get that. Big, big believer in action takers. You have this big pool of people that aren't doing anything that want to do something and you have you know, 10, 15% of people that do something, that do a deal or two, and then you have like 5% of that 15% that actually keep doing it and make it a full-time thing. And that big intermittent pool of melting pot of people from all backgrounds are always looking for something. But you have to learn to pull out your 44 Magnum and blow that shiny object squirrel straight in the head like Dirty Harry. Because it'll make your day. Trust me. All right? I'll make, make my day. All right? If you're focused, if you take on focus, you'll be a lot happier. You'll also... Closing a lot more deals, you'll make things a lot more effective because you'll take all your energy 
and put behind one thing versus, well, I'm going to do a little bit of here, I'll do a little bit here. I met a guy last night who's like, well, I bought some land and I bought a tax deed and I bought a restaurant. Out. And I don't know. I'm a lumberjack. I mean, I'm a, a pump jack out in Midland. And I'm like, dude, I get you're having some fun doing things. But he's like, well, I bought this tax lien. I've had it for three years. My attorneys ain't done nothing with it. And I'm like, the reason you're all over the place there is probably because you're trying to save. You're saving pennies is, is causing you to step over dollars. I'm like, dude, if you bought that for and owned it for three, four years, you should have gotten your money back. Well, yeah, but I'm getting 25%. I'm like, no, you're not getting anything right now until you actually take action. And that's, what, I think, that the biggest thing I can tell you today if you're watching this, whether you're a note investor, real estate entrepreneur, or I would also say if you're a, a educator, not a guru, an educator, somebody who's out helping people, mentoring people, counseling, giving counsel to investors, that's the one bit of advice I think is most needed. Be focused. There are people out there that, oh, you can do 12 different ways or 20 different ways of doing real estate deals. And yeah, you can, but it's you can't, you can't try to be everything to everybody, okay? You can't try to do everything because you'll never get anything done. Uh, somebody posted yesterday, Cody Cox had a great quote there, you'll never oh, get anywhere yeah. by throwing rocks at all the barking dogs, mm -hmm. okay? I think that came actually from Warren Buffett originally, is his quote. Um, you have to focus on one thing. Now, don't get me wrong. You will change majors, okay? I know I changed majors three times in college, all right? I started off in mass communication. I want to be the next ESPN DJ, all right? That's what I wanted to be, the next Stuart Scott, the next Chris Berman, okay? And then when I transferred to universities, which happens, I had to move. I moved. I changed from, uh, I'm sorry, I was in uh, radio TV and then changed to mass comm. And then when I transferred again, I focused on business because ultimately business was in my background. Uh, my father being an entrepreneur, my mom being an entrepreneur, opening a local hardware store, growing up in that aspect. Entrepreneurism was something that was big to me. And that's why the business became the best route for me. And once I focused on that, I was a lot happier and also a lot more effective. Because like many people freshman year, they're so busy out trying to figure themselves out, they often end up flunking out because they're too busy trying to, uh, they have a champagne lifestyle on a beer budget. Champagne tastes on a beer budget. Uh-huh. And I've seen that too many times. I had so many friends that went to college that flunked out for the first year because they weren't focused on stuff. Yes, you can have a good time, but you've also got to make sure you can get your stuff done. And there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there, wannabe, want to, want entrepreneurs, I should say. There's also some douchepreneurs, too. <laughs> Uh, out there talking a big game and not doing anything. That's like saying, oh, I go to class. I, I'm a, a college student, but I don't ever go to class. Yeah, you're not a college student. You're, you're what's called homeless <laughs> at that point. All right? And there's nothing wrong with auditing classes. There's nothing wrong with going to a workshop here or there, figuring if it's something that's going to work for you. It's going to work in today's market. But you have to be careful of where you spend your time. All right? Uh, I know I've taken tons of classes, tons of workshops. I've seen hundreds of uh, real estate educators out there teaching different things. Different things. And I was like that. I was like, let me figure this out. Well, I don't really feel like that's for me. That was a great class. I learned a little thing. Maybe I can use something like that later on. But I don't think it was for me. Uh, or I went and learned something else. So short sales. Okay, great. That works for a little while. That'll be helpful for what I'm focused on then. But you have to figure out one two things at the max and focus on it. Now, if you're working a full-time job, no offense, you don't have time to be focused on two, three, four things. You need to focus on like one thing and one thing only. If you really want to leave your job, get out of the rat race, you got to focus on one thing and one thing only to make things happen. So, any questions, comments from people? Uh, Cody Cox says you need to simplify. Yeah, so um, Cody would be a great, uh, Great word of uh, experience on there because he actually had to simplify a lot of his stuff to make things effective for him. Uh, Matthew Fisher says, "What would you do different, Scott? If you knew, if you knew what you knew now and had to start over?" Uh, fish. <laughs> I would be more focused. Um, there's a lot of people out there that talk big game. Oh, I'm a real estate entrepreneur. I'm doing all this stuff, and then I'm a, I'm a foreign currency trader. I'm also a hydrogen water expert, or I'm also. Uh, stock options. You know what? You're, no, you're not. Uh, unless you have a business card where you go every day and trade stocks as a financial advisor, CFP, quit wasting your time 
acting like the big Grant Cardone guy or whatever, and just focus on one thing. Fish for you, buddy. Quit with the freaking stock options and trading and all that stuff. Yes, you work out and you go work out, but you ain't. You don't. don't nobody's paying you for stock options. Your biggest bang for the buck is going to be in the real estate stuff. So whether it's the uh, the cash buyers that you're doing and you're finding rentals or turnkey, I still don't know what fish does. I love you, brother. Coming from a good place, but I don't know if you're flipping properties or you're finding cash buyers for people that you're making sums. You don't have a clear message. So my biggest advice to anybody out there is have a very clear message. When I was doing, when I started off, I was like, like I just said, I was doing some rentals. I was doing some light fix and flips. I was doing some wholesale and I was doing some private capital raising. Oh my gosh, my head was spinning because I was constantly chasing the next thing. I was constantly spinning plates. And life became so much simpler when I just started letting those other plates fall and just focus that there just one, one plate. One plate, one plate. Because uh, the reason for that, if you're out there talking about you're doing all these other things, nobody believes you're an expert on any one of them. Oh yeah, you might be able to dabble in it, but you got to focus on one thing and one thing only. And honestly, I'm glad I picked notes. I picked it at the right time. I've ridden that train very well. I'm also glad I'm here now because I see the fact that we're six to 12 months ahead of time. But you're also going to see some changes taking place with a few of the different things that we do here at We Close Notes. We've been transitioning, obviously. Uh, we built a beast of a business with coaching and mentoring and, and deal flow. And I am uh, very proud of all the success that our students are having out there, all the things that are making, uh, people that are making things happen in the industry. And we've really spawned some amazing entrepreneurs out there. And I, I get so excited, especially this next week, being able to spend time with all those individuals, um, they just just do an amazing job, and, and I I'm glad we could be the seed and maybe the uh, the fire that helped ignite them to get some things happen. But I'm glad I'm in the known industry. Um, based on what I see in society and what's going on in the market, I like being on the paper game. I think that's the best place to be. Um, if you're in any type of paper game, student loans, credit card debt, houses, commercial, whatever, hard money. If you're in the paper game, you're making money. Okay, that's where you need to be, and it's easy to get in. Um, you gotta have some experience, obviously, to learn a little bit there. But it's a great way to make some money versus chasing properties or chasing tenants. I don't like toilet tenants and trash. All you do is be a land for a little while, and then come to the dark side uh, or the sexy side, I should say, and you realize, oh my God, what I'm doing, Greg? You guys would agree to that, huh? Your oh. dad is a big one like that. Oh, my dad's loving the cash flow without. <laughs> Having to deal with without having to deal with the, the personalities to go along. So that's what I would focus on is is be focused. Focus on one thing. If it's not notes, you like the fix and flip game. Great, focus on it. Jason Bible, Tom Perry with Houston House Buyers are great examples of if they focused on their fix and flip side there in business and they bought over three hundred homes. We've had conversations about it. they're like, yeah, if we had to start over, we'd go in the note business. But we've built this machine. Why get take our why take it off our foot off the gas pedal? I totally agree with them. Doesn't mean we don't talk and have the same ideas and things. Um, they just have built the machine. AC Ramos with Prosperity Group there in Houston has done the same thing. Uh, Curtis Warden up there doing some higher end flips and stuff like that. When you build a niche, you just own that niche. Okay, you own it like the skin that you're in. Okay, what are the questions and comments we got for people? Ryan, Ryan Roche, uh, he says HML and notes. That's my only focus. Okay, good. Uh, George Crocker says he's trying hard to focus. Although, to give George credit, he's doing a really good job. George is focused. Yeah. Yeah. He's doing a very good George, job. George is really focused. George is just a couple pointers. Is make a few edits when you upload your transcript from Rev. So it flows a little bit better when you send an email. The fact that you're taking action is important. Yeah, we were really excited when he came in and said George was live. So we yeah. all started Yeah, all <laughs> everybody in the whole w WCN group jumped on and was liking your video, when, you, when we see people taking action and having success, trust me, we get excited about that. So we're excited to have you coming out next week, George, as well, and kind of get a sneak peek at the mastermind. So any other questions, comments? Not right now. Not right now? All right, everybody. Well, that's all I've got for today. It's hump day. Go make something happen. For those of you that joined us on Monday night, um, your submissions in for the nine things that you had to get done is due by 5 o'clock today. So hopefully you're out posting most of the heavy list lifting should be done. If you uh, filmed a video and uploaded it to YouTube and got it transcribed via Rev, that's the heavy lifting. Now it's all about copy pasting and editing 
and putting it into your social media and blogs and sending me an email by five o'clock. One email, not 12 emails, one email with all your links in that one email. So we look forward to seeing that and featuring some of you guys tomorrow and also featuring an amazing post that Nicole put together. We got to figure out the math behind it. I don't, I don't, I don't. It's over 400 likes now. We had another 100 That's likes crazy. yesterday. Crazy blown up on Instagram. A interesting, but it'll be a great little case study we'll talk about tomorrow and uh, Friday. So have a great Wednesday, everybody. Go make something happen. If you like the video here, if you know somebody's struggling with being focused, go ahead and share this video. Tell five or six people about it. You can also find all the video replays at youtube.com slash we close notes is our YouTube page. So find us on YouTube, like, subscribe, and uh, that way you'll be notified of every video that we upload there and be able to watch it without having to ask me, Scott, what's the replay like? So see you guys later. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.